5 a.m., I keep telling myself, I get to do this every day. I have to keep pushing. I have to conquer this disease. When I feel weak, I have to remind myself, have a strong mind, have a strong body. So, and then around the corner is where actually I grew up. Um, this is my block, Henry Boulevard. So, grew up right over here. This white house here. This is uh, my hometown house. This is where all some great memories happened as a kid. February 12th, it was a Tuesday night. I turned my neck and I felt right here a large lump sticking out of my neck. Not knowing what it was, thought it was maybe a pulled muscle, went to work the next day. So on the morning of February 15th, um, it was a Friday before February break, Matt and I are both teachers in the same um, building, Sachem North, and my principal came to my office to tell me to get all my stuff, all my belongings, I don't need my grade book, but to take a walk with her down to her office. So as we were walking down there, there was minimal conversation. I really had no idea what was going on. I went to my doctor in Holbrook, uh, and he sent me for a CAT scan. 8.45 in the morning, I'm teaching my earth signs, and I get a text from my doctor, who's a good and dear friend of mine. I've known him for about 15 years. And his text to me was, uh, you, need, you need to call me now. And Matt's in there hysterically crying, saying that he got a call from his doctors. I said, well, what, what, what happened? kids were uh, taking notes. It was very quiet in the classroom. I, I remember that. It wasn't, you couldn't hear a pin drop of my students. And I went back into the, into the room and um, I called my doctor and I said, hey, what, you know, what's going on? What do you have for me? What, what's, what's, you know, what's with this lump? And uh, his response to me was, you know, we're good friends for a long time. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to speak to you as a doctor right now. And he says, uh, you have cancer. As soon as he said that, I said, no way, this can't be, this can't be right. Um, it was awful. We sat there for about 10 minutes, crying. Uh, you know, I was in shock, disbelief, but kind of like maybe he could be wrong. You know, he's not a cancer doctor, just my primary physician. And I said, what makes you think that? And he says, well, the CAT scan you took is showing uh, that it's, it's cancerous. So he goes, you need to leave school this moment and uh, get out. I have an appointment set up with you in two hours at the store. And it was just a day of crying and trying to go to doctors and getting appointments and seeing really what, what was really going on. Because we were still in shock that this can't be, can't be right. Maybe they mis misdiagnosed it. I try to tell people I'm not trying to survive, I'm trying to conquer this. Monday morning here and uh, head into the gym, get my workout in for the day. Today's another day and that's how I look at my life right now is just kind of get through one day at a time. What if I just change the way I look at the world? What if today is just the beginning? What if I decide who I'm going to be and become it? What if my actions can create a ripple effect that will transcend space and time? What if impossible isn't fact? What if it's opinion? And what if I don't buy it? One of the things I've learned over our, our time together as friends and, and as uh, you know, 
as brothers as I think of it. That he is one of the most competitive, determined, uh, passionate people that you'll ever meet. You know, the things that he's most passionate about, his family, his kids, um, he goes after everything 100 miles an hour. You know, it's one of the most infectious things about him, like that's who he is. So, what are we gonna do what, today? Yeah. The girls are going to camp. Want fruit? Strawberry, yeah. banana, blueberry? Oh, ew. Mm, yeah, this is delicious. <laughs> How'd you guys sleep, good? You made your bed, you're supposed to make no, your bed. No, you don't make your bed. Just at Sloan Kettering right now in Comac. We, uh, I got some blood work to do today. My liver counts are uh, pretty high, so actually I'm off my treatments right now. So we're hoping to, you know, some good news going in, get some blood work, get the results in a couple of hours. All right, let's go do this. Let's go. So people ask, why am I going to the gym? Why am I doing this every day? 5.30 in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. Uh, I've always went to the gym. Um, just, you know, my the stakes are a little bit higher for me, you know, which is cancer. The biggest thing is uh, physical shape and getting to the gym and kind of grinding out every day. Um, so that's why I go. I mean, oh, well, honestly, if I, if I miss a day, I feel like it's a day cancer is beating me. You know, my new slogan is in life is I don't have to go to the gym. I get to go to the gym, you know, just like I get to hug my kids another day. I get to hug my wife. You know, I get to spend time with my friends. I get to go to the gym. When you have to ask yourself if it's worth it and consciously avoid quitting and turning to an easier approach, remember, anyone can run downhill. Not many people can run up. We just had a great workout at the gym, and then I got some appointments with uh, salt therapy, and then I got my pH fountain. Hey, Hello, how, how are, are you? you? How are you? Good to see you, kid. You too. You ready for your yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. A little salt therapy. All right. I'm ready to do this. Okay. Come on in. Let's All talk. Right. Feels good to you. I'll go right over here. Yeah. Uh, sure, why not? Let's get my little recliner going. Hold on. 45 minutes of salt therapy. Um, so I come here about two to three times a week. And, you know, this is kind of holistic, natural healing stuff. Helps your immune system, respiratory system, um, your skin. Um, it's good. It's some good natural salt that I'm breathing in. And it's a good part of my process of healing, so... And the good thing is, the salt therapy is right next door to my pH fountain where uh, I go do my detox and go into that part next. What's up, Patrick? How are you? Yep. Yep, three gallons to fill up. Okay, awesome. Awesome. All right, my man. Uh, that last door on that left? Yeah, come on back. I'll set it for 35 minutes. Gives you plenty of time to be able to get yourself situated. Awesome. Hand Thank you. Glass, fresh set of towels, sauna vibration therapy. Awesome. I'll see you when you return. All right. Thanks, yeah. my man. Enjoy it. All right. All right, just got out of my detox here. So this is the, the water, nice high alkaline water we pick up that I've been kind of putting in my body. But uh, the detox is great. It's 30, 35 minutes of uh, a sauna and then 10 minutes of a pulse machine. So it's really heating up my body, shaking all the negative ions out. Um, I feel great every time I leave this place. You know, I come here three times a week, uh, get my water, bring my jugs back to my house for the kids and the family. It just means so much to me. It just means, you know, that the love is everywhere, the support is everywhere. That, you know, living in a community like Sachem um, and having the support from everyone in the community um, ha has really lifted my spirits up and 
and made me truly um, fight for this, this disease. When I heard, I just didn't believe it. It's been a guy who's always been kind of a superhero to me, where as I was a ninth, 10th grader on JV and varsity, terrified of him, becoming great friends with him, and then developing a relationship where he was a best friend and a role model, I'm still looking at him like he can't be broken. When I heard about the news a couple months ago, it was like the world just stopped you know, in time. It was really tough to think why you know, did it have to be with somebody that I looked up to so much. For most people when I think, you know, this is, this is going to be something that I don't know if they can handle, you know, but for him I was like, this is it, this is his wheelhouse, like he'll go out at a hundred million miles an hour and do whatever he can do to get out. He never shies away to talk about it because he just knows, he, like he says, every day's a game day. He's a fighter. Um, every day he laces up and he competes, that's what he does, he competes and he doesn't lose. And this is the same thing, he's not gonna, he's not gonna let this thing beat him. He's going to get up every day, not complain, and just going to do what he's got to do. He's going to beat it. Well, if there was anyone that could beat it, it's Desi. I mean, you hear everyone say that, and it's because everyone believes it. I mean, he's, no one works as hard as he does. He's, he's got it in him, and everyone believes in him. He's got so many people in his corner. And, you know, the first call I had to call was my parents. So that was, uh, that was difficult. Really. That, was, that was really difficult, um, you know. You, you call your parents who brought you into this world, you know, and uh, brought you into this world, and, and now, you know, their kid is, is there's stuff going on that couldn't possibly kill him. Not that he's perfect, nobody's perfect, but he, sh he showed what he really was, and the kids looked up to him. But let me tell you something everybody in that school knew him. <laughs> I learned from our uh, a Cat Volleyball Team, a book they read this year, is talks, it talks about it, there's a part in it where it talks about that we get to do things in life and people don't realize that, right? Yeah, how many people wake up every morning and say, I have to go to work today, right? I have to go here, I have to go to the gym, I have... You don't have to do anything. You can sit on the couch all day if you want, right? But when you say you have to, it's such a negative self-talk that goes into your mind. And it starts off your day in a negative way, all right? Instead, now with my cancer and my new, my new lens in life, because my lens in life is a lot different than most people now, is when that alarm goes off at 5 o'clock, I actually get excited and say, I get to go to the gym today, because it's another day I get to do something to heal myself. Right? I get to see my kids. I get to hug my wife again. I get to go to work. I get to go to practice. So there are things that um, I am using mentally now to really make my mindset stronger through this. And if I think I'm going to die through this disease, guess what? I'm going to die. Right? If I keep telling myself I'm going to beat it, I'm going to beat it. And, that's, and that is my whole purpose in life right now is to beat this every day.